So as a lot of you know, a couple of weeks ago, I went on my dream trip to America. I traveled around Florida for six weeks and it was, it was such an incredible trip. I got to do so many things I never thought I'd be able to. If you know me, you know I don't come from a wealthy family. I come from a very loved and very accepting and beautiful family, but we didn't have a lot of spare income growing up. I never went abroad. The first time I got on a plane was when I was 19. I never thought I'd make it to America. I just sort of ruled it out. I never ever thought about it. And so when this opportunity came up, I was so excited. <laughs> I'm always really aware of the environmental impacts of traveling. Flying, for instance, is very, very bad for the environment. So there is always that sense of guilt um, when flying. So I didn't want to fly while I was in America. I only wanted to make sure I took one long flight to the States and that was it. But I did want to explore a bit of that area of the world. So I decided to go on a cruise. Now I know cruising is equally just as detrimental to the environment. I am really aware of that, but I don't travel as often as other people do. I don't take very many flights. This was my first flight in four years, maybe. So the way I look at it is I don't wanna restrict myself. I wanna do what I can do and not restrict myself in a way that reduces my opportunities because I wanna see the world, which is why I decided to go on a cruise because it was no flying and I got to see a lot of places that I wouldn't have seen without being able to get on a flight and things like that. So with that all being said, who did I cruise with and what was it like? I cruised with Virgin Atlantic and their cruise line is quite new. I'm not sure how long they've been going, but it's a relatively new thing. And the cruise I went on was only four nights, um, which was perfect for me because I've never been on a cruise and I just wanted a little bit of a taster. The cruise took us to Miami, Key West and the Bahamas and then back again. I got to see so much during this time, it was insane. So when we first approached the boat, I was literally blown away. This boat is like, it's huge. It's, I have no words to describe how big this boat is. And sort of getting on board, everyone was really friendly, the staff were really, really lovely. And it just felt like a really lovely and pleasant place to be. The atmosphere is really good. And all around the ship, there were some insane things. Like there was a running track. Obviously I didn't use the running track. I walked it a few times, but you're not gonna see me running in 40 degree heat. I mean, you're not gonna see me running in any heat but that's not the point. <laughs> they had restaurants, they had a casino, they had a theater, they had swimming pools, two swimming pools. There was just so much going on. It was a little bit overwhelming and I'm quite introverted. I don't like big crowds of people. So that was a bit overwhelming, but it was still very, very cool. The room was so comfortable. I was expecting sort of quite a dingy, like, cabin which it was a cabin and the ceiling was very low and you know you were very aware you were on a boat but this room was so well thought of so to conserve energy and to conserve power of the ship the aircon only comes on if the door is closed and you have to keep your door closed while the ship's moving. And I thought that was a really cool feature because it stopped you from keeping the door open because it was hot. I spent so much time out on the balcony. Uh, just being able to see ocean was an experience in itself. I've never just been able to see ocean. But I want to talk about the ship experience in itself. So for those of you who don't know, I am teetotal. I haven't had a drink for two years and that's just a personal decision I came to because I was drinking silly amounts. You can hear more about my sobriety journey in a video here, but I haven't had a drink for two years. And this ship was very alcohol 
centered. Basically the entire ship was around drinking culture and I'd imagine it would be incredible if you were a drinker but I found myself walking around not finding too much to do if you didn't drink and now that's only my problem. I messaged so many of my friends to say this cruise would be perfect for you because it was just so much fun and people seemed to get to know each other. I saw sort of people that got on the ship as complete strangers and left really good friends and I think that is something I probably miss about the drinking culture because if you're not having a drink you don't really have much of an excuse to join that circle. Um, I've also got social anxiety so I don't really put myself out there that much. I know I could join those things without having a drink but without the Dutch courage do I really want to be doing that? Probably not. But if you do drink or if you do enjoy the nightlife culture, there is so much to do on this ship. There is a nightclub, there are fancy bars, there are bars where you don't have to dress up, there are bars like American Diners where you can play shuffleboard and all sorts of other games. It's really well thought out for people who enjoy partying and enjoy that kind of lifestyle. So I would highly recommend if that is your cup of tea. It just wasn't particularly mine but I did enjoy the atmosphere and how friendly the staff were and I really enjoyed each destination we stopped at um, because you got a full day in each place and that was incredible. When it came to the food and eating on the ship there were so many options. You want sushi? They've got sushi. You want pizza? They've got pizza. They make it fresh for you on the ship. If you want fruit salad, if you want pancakes, if you want tacos, if you want all of these different things, they are available no matter what you fancy. But the only thing I will say is if you've got any dietary requirements, you might want to look ahead of time because I wouldn't say they were particularly allergen friendly. And that's actually being quite generous. I wouldn't say they were allergen friendly, sort of at all. I was on the ship with somebody who has celiac disease and they couldn't find anything safe and the staff, although they were so, so friendly and lovely and just wanted to do what was best for you, they didn't seem to really know what celiac was, which is fine, but then once we'd explained to them that celiac is you can't have any gluten and cross-contamination is a big deal they sort of said well there's not much we can do which again is understandable there are some things that are naturally gluten-free but when you also add into the mix being dairy-free because of a lactose intolerance that gets a bit complicated and we did feel like so many chains do it perfectly and so many independent restaurants do it perfectly that you would have thought a ship of that size and that capacity would do it better. The vegan food wasn't particularly excellent, there was only ever sort of one choice at each place which I mean it's a ship, it's literally a moving community essentially so I wasn't too fussed about that but had I been celiac as well I'm just not sure it really catered for it. Now I wouldn't have a problem with this at all I know dietary requirements are very personal and even though I think the world generally should be more inclusive the problem I had was before we even went on the ship we specifically rang and asked if it was allergen friendly and they said yes so I just wanted to clarify to anybody if you if you have allergies or if you are intolerant to anything maybe do a bit more research into what cruise ship you go on just because this one didn't seem particularly clued up. To be honest the only thing I think it would take to improve that would be to have an allergen free kitchen, just a small space that is just dedicated to no cross-contamination whatsoever. There are bakeries and kitchens all over the world that do this really, really well, and some of them are very small, so I think it is possible to do it on a ship. The other thing is probably have a dedicated allergens officer, or at least one of the servers or waiters to be clued up as to what each allergen is, because it was 
I don't know if I'd use the word frustrating, but it got a little bit repetitive when we had to keep explaining, like, we can't have gluten, we can't have dairy, because, you know, you would expect sort of waiters to do that. And I don't know about the rest of the world, but England and America are very, very good at it. You go into a restaurant and quite often they ask you if you've got any allergens and you just tell them and they explain the procedure. And sometimes you go into a restaurant and they say, we can't guarantee uh, no cross-contamination. And that's fine because you know and then you go and find somewhere else. But when you're confined to a ship, I just would have expected them to be a bit more inclusive or have thought about it beforehand. But that's, that's my only kind of criticism if you like, and I'm only sharing it because I would have wanted to know before getting on the ship, so. I think cruising generally is something that is such a good idea, and if we can make it more environmentally friendly, it's perfect. I know we've got a long way to go, but you can see so many countries in one hit without getting on any long haul flights, so it is a good idea. I will definitely try and get on another cruise again at some point, and try and see as many countries as I can without taking 10, 15, 20, 30 flights. I think if I were to cruise again next time, I would maybe try and find a cruise that has a bit more for everybody, not just around the drinking culture. That's not Virgin Voyages fault. This was an over 18s cruise. Obviously, it's gonna be centered around drinking because that's what most people want to do. That is not a criticism of mine at all all but I think maybe next time I might find a cruise liner that is maybe more centered around sort of fun activities maybe they allow children on board so they have cinemas and they have all sorts of different things that I might be interested in doing because I am just a massive child apparently <laughs> I think if you're considering going on a cruise or something similar definitely definitely research it first it wasn't what I expected but it was amazing. I got to see the entirety of Key West. One day we walked 30,000 steps. 30,000 steps. And it was hot. It was about 35 degrees. And if you're from the UK, walking 30,000 steps in 35 degree heat. Got to see the Bahamas, which was something I never thought I would ever get to do. I swam with a shark. At least that's what I'm telling people. I didn't realise I was swimming with a shark until I got out of the water and saw there was a shark. So be careful when swimming in the sea. <laughs> I got to talk to people that I otherwise wouldn't talk to. So many people came up to me and asked me where I was from because obviously most people on the ship were American. So they asked me where I was from and got to know me a little bit. And that was so, so lovely. I think getting to see so many cultures in a relatively short period of time is such a privilege. And I am so, so, so lucky to have been able to do this and to sort of tick a few places off of my bucket list because I never thought in a million years I'd get to do this. I really thought cruising was for sort of over 60s, maybe people who had quite a bit of disposable income, but it is possible to do it affordably and you don't have to be retired. You can enjoy your life now and I really recommend it if it sounds like your cup of tea. If you have any more questions about my first cruise, what it was like, or the booking process, anything like that, do ask down in the comments because I kind of love talking about it. I want people to feel like they can go and do these things and it's possible for them. So please feel free to ask. I would love to answer them. For those of you, if you are new, my name's Becca and I talk about basically everything that interests me from sustainability to travel to mental health, that's a big one. And if you want me to talk about anything that interests you, again, pop it in the comments and I will do that. Thank you so much for being here and listening to me waffle on. It is lovely to see you, lovely to see you again, lovely to meet you. I hope you have a lovely day, a lovely life, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. End of credits fam. I just want to say to you guys, there are so many of you. <laughs> I love it so much. I hope that video was okay. I felt like it was a bit waffly, but I wanted to get it out there, you know, because I would have wanted to know that stuff. I don't know, I don't know.
Anyway, it's lovely to see you guys. Again, please do comment down below if you are an end of credits fam because I love you. It's amazing. It's so nice to see like a little community growing. And I will see you in the next one. My leg is dead. Ow. Oh, do you ever get that where you sit cross-legged? I just shouldn't sit cross-legged. <laughs> anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. Lovely to see you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.